Welcome to our discussion on understanding atrial fibrillation and stroke risk. The content used within this program was developed by Pfizer. As your healthcare partner, we think it is important for you to understand your medical condition and medications used in its treatment. The goal of this presentation is for you to become more familiar with your condition and how you and your healthcare professionals can together help manage it. The heart condition that your doctor has found is known as non-valvular atrial fibrillation. Atrial fibrillation, or AF, is the most common heart arrhythmia, a type of irregular heartbeat. There are two examples of AF. Valvular AF, which generally refers to AF, where there is moderate to severe mitral stenosis or a mechanical heart valve, or non-valvular AF, which is AF without either of those things. Everyone has a risk of having a stroke where the blood flow to the brain can be reduced. Having AF increases your risk of stroke by up to five times. You may be wondering what atrial fibrillation means. The heart has four chambers, and they work together to pump blood throughout the body. The right and left atria are located at the top of the heart. The right and left ventricles are located beneath the atria. The heart normally has a regular beat that moves blood in and out of the four chambers of the heart and out of the heart to the rest of the body. This is the sound and rhythm of a normal heartbeat. This image is also what your doctor sees on an electrocardiogram. In AF, the heartbeat is irregular and causes the atria of the heart to quiver, causing the pumping action of the heart to be less efficient. Because of this, some of the blood stays in the heart instead of getting pumped out. In AF, the heartbeat is irregularly irregular and may sound like this. This is what your doctor sees on an electrocardiogram. Other factors that may increase your risk of stroke due to AF include having heart failure or high blood pressure, having diabetes, having had previous strokes or transient ischemic attacks, having had previous heart attacks or blood circulation problems, being female, kidney disease, and age 65 or older. People with AF are five times more likely to have a stroke than people who do not have AF. How does AF increase your risk of stroke? The irregular heartbeat can cause blood to pool in the atrium. When blood pools, it can lead to a chain of events that cause the formation of a blood clot. If a clot forms, a piece or all of the clot may break off, travel out of the heart, and make its way through blood vessels to the brain. When a blood clot reaches the brain, it can block blood vessels and the flow of blood and oxygen to the brain, causing a stroke. One of the primary treatments to reduce the risk of blood clots forming in the heart in AF is a medication called an anticoagulant. Anticoagulants help to reduce the chance of new blood clots from forming and existing clots from growing larger and traveling to the brain and causing a stroke by blocking a step in the chain of events that causes blood clots. The benefits and risks of any medication should be discussed with you by your healthcare providers. It is very important that you follow the treatment plan that you and your healthcare professionals agree on together. There are different anticoagulation medication choices available by prescription. Anticoagulant medications help prevent clots from forming in your blood. If you miss doses of your medication, it can increase your risk of stroke. Similarly, if you stop taking your anticoagulant without talking to your doctor, it can increase your risk of stroke. But all anticoagulant medications increase your risk of bleeding. Contact your healthcare provider if you experience any side effects from your medication, such as unexpected bleeding or bleeding that is severe or lasts a long time, headaches, dizziness or weakness, unexpected pain, swelling, or joint pain red, pink, or brown urine, or red or black stools that look like tar. 
Your healthcare team is here to help you every step of the way. We are here to answer any questions you may have, educate you on your condition and medications, and help you get the most appropriate health care possible. Your health is very important. Taking your anticoagulant medication regularly and as directed by your doctor is also important. You should make sure you let your other health care providers, like your dentist or eye doctor, know that you are taking an anticoagulant medication. If you have any questions or concerns about your condition or medications, please talk to your doctor or pharmacist.